my son ate acid or something and has essentially lost his mind. Okay. He was running around with a knife earlier. <laughs> I'm gonna die! I can, I can no! Do I'll kill you, bro! They call it robo-tripping, drinking a large amount of cough syrup to get high. Perfectly safe. Let's stick my dome in it. Oh, it actually feels pretty good. It was the year 2000 when a site called DXM.Kenton was created. It was the beginning of an online community with one common thing in mind, ingesting large amounts of cough suppressant to experience robo-tripping. The beginnings were pretty benign, a simple website to share information and mingle with like-minded individuals, but the horrors that would unravel would permanently stain the minds of those involved, becoming some of the most obscure and horrific lore on the internet, completely untold. Until now. You will hear information never before revealed to the public in this video, because this is the first and only YouTube channel to ever go down this dark rabbit hole. So from some of their lighthearted and goofy inside traditions, to some of the most brutal murders, predators, overall disgusting events, and a lot more, please watch this at your own risk. This video is not created to give them a bad name. In fact, they did us a great favor by revealing their dark past so that I can make it into a video. The Dexterverse is strictly a harm reduction community, and the present day staff does not condone, encourage, or tolerate hate, violence, substance abuse, or any nonsense. Any disturbing things mentioned in this video were done by members who are now banned from ever being part of their community. So with that, let's begin at the tip of the iceberg. Tier 1. You should wait until you're out of high school. Present day Dexterverse is a no-nonsense space when it comes to minors. You must be 18 years or older to participate in their community, and oftentimes they haze new members by saying things like you should wait until you're out of high school, and other iterations of this just to get newcomers to admit that they're underaged. This confuses a lot of new members, but it's effective and they actively find methods to make sure that no underaged users are sneaking into their discord, which is a sign of relief considering what you'll hear about further down the iceberg. Devin Cat Telepathy A now banned member would film himself taking extremely high amounts of DXM, and then he would showcase bizarre movements and behaviors and claim that he could speak to his cat telepathically. He would keep his arms in constant motion and say that he felt a pressure in his back that he had to regulate through a specific dance. He says our brains are always doing this specific dance. These videos would contain other odd things, though strange it was never nefarious. Tier 2 Red Bull Mailbox an unnamed member had a YouTube channel where she would post her paranoid delusions of being the victim of gang stalking. A notable title to a video she posted was called Red Bull Can Left on Mailbox Psychological Operation. She would film and take photos of everyday events and claim that she was being psychologically attacked. So to her, it wasn't just a Red Bull can that she found on her mailbox, but rather it confirmed psychological warfare against her by gang stalkers or the government. This behavior was exhibited with many other things such as seeing three red cars drive by or a parked carpet cleaning van. She believed people would do things to break her down mentally and she also believed she was spiritually a rat and would eventually knock most of her own teeth out except her two front teeth to achieve a more rat-like appearance. David's Quest for Arizona a member named David was intoxicated when he decided that he wanted to take a trip to the nearby 7-Eleven to buy an Arizona iced tea. He decided to drive while he was in the voice chat despite everyone telling him not to do this. He did it anyway and ended up getting into an accident. The accident was minor but the police were involved and he managed to somehow not get a DUI. 
This event got him banned, and another member was outraged that he was banned for this, and in protest to this, he decided to shoot himself with heroin and claimed that he was taking the shot of heroin for David before leaving the server. Mula slash Doug Comas Two different members, one going by Make Mula and the other named Doug, both overdosed in the same month. Both went into comas, both were in comas for several months, and both survived. Spam Members will type in the word come into the general chat, and it will be followed with a swarm of people typing in the word come. They also do this with the letter E. There is no real rhyme or reason for this, they just do it. And there have been threads lasting over a year with thousands and thousands of messages just spamming the word come. Charcuterie Board A member who's been a part of the Dexterverse community for 20 years has now recently been exposed for being a pathological liar. It all began when he posted a charcuterie board to the chat claiming that his girlfriend made it for him. Out of curiosity, a moderator reverse image searched the photo and found that exact same photo on the internet. This led to a frenzy of reverse image searching all of the photos he's ever posted about his girlfriend who he spoke a lot about. He's even posted nudes of his girlfriend in the not safe for work chat to flaunt her. Turns out that all the photos he's ever posted about his girlfriend were traced back to leaks of an adult actress that goes by the name Sue Lightning. He's been speaking about and flaunting his girlfriend for over three years now. OC Blocklist A user named Overclocked, OC for short, is known in the community for being extremely sensitive, and will block anyone for saying anything even slightly offensive. Because of how frequently he blocks people, his block list has become a meme, and I'm probably blocked now for mentioning this in my video. PMK Alt A user named PMK was banned many years ago, but she kept creating alternate accounts to rejoin only to eventually be found out and banned again. She was obsessed with being a part of the Dexterverse and created hundreds of different accounts trying to rejoin the server. It was so excessive that it's an inside joke now. For years, there was paranoia about any new user being yet another one of her alt accounts. Snibs Deleted Lounge A former Dexterverse moderator was on copious amounts of substances when he accidentally deleted the lounge channel which had hundreds of thousands of messages in its history. Now used as an inside joke, if someone says something really dumb, they might say something like maybe Snibs was right for deleting that lounge. And sometimes moderators joke by threatening to delete the lounge. Bev ate the onion. A user named Beverly got temp banned for a month for bullying another user who later turned out to be a self-admitted Dexterverse instituted a new policy where if you eat an entire raw onion on live video chat with at least one moderator present, they'll lift temporary bans no matter the length. The deal was offered to her and she took it. She ate the onion with 20 people in video chat. She started crying because of the onion halfway through but kept going and finished it. She was unbanned and given a special role, ate the onion. Tier 3 Rai Eats His Own Shit A user named Rai who is mentioned again further down the iceberg for grooming and predatory behavior is known for many creepy and disgusting moments. A notable one happened while he was on voice chat where he admitted that he has tasted his own shit out of curiosity. BV Schism a longtime member named Woke Bush was banned and more than half of the Dexterverse rioted into chaos because they felt it was unjust. Woke Bush created his own server called Bushoverse, or BV for short, in which hundreds of people began to join. The Dexterverse community continued to show increased animosity towards the moderators, and the moderators finally unbanned him under pressure. Bushoverse is now its own Dexterverse adjacent satellite community where members discuss more private and problematic subjects without stirring up the main server. 
Xzone's belly button fungus. A user named Xzone was in a video chat when he revealed he didn't know he had to clean his belly button until recently that year. He was already in his 20s and when he got around to cleaning it for the first time, he discovered he had a fungal infection that went unnoticed. 11 Fries A user named Ethan was food shaming someone for eating fast food and he told them to limit how many fries they ate to only 10 fries. So anytime fries are brought up, people say make sure to not eat 11 and people randomly tag him and tell him they ate 11 fries. Demon Shitting Behind Dumpster a user that goes by the name Demon had a terrible case of robo shits, which is diarrhea caused by DXM use. Out of desperation, he squatted behind a dumpster. He wiped it with his shirt, which he quickly just threw away and ended up in the bizarre part of Dexterverse lore. 7 Feet Tall Yari A user named Yari was trying to convince someone that he was 7 feet tall. Someone photoshopped the picture and managed to convince them it's just referenced as a meme now. Chemical Jabba the Hut Video A former user filmed himself in a deranged state likely due to copious amounts of drugs, insulting the owner at the time whose name is Chemical. Here is the video in question. Chemical, you fat bitch. You Jabba the Hut looking mother This video would get him banned from the server. 1984 Anytime the moderators do anything such as ban someone, even if it's completely fair and justified, it's met with mock protests of 1984. For example, a moderator might ban someone for violent or hateful remarks, which will be met with a group of people typing in 1984 or using a 1984 emote. Shulg's Peanut Butter Table Shulg's is a moderator and has avoidant restrictive food intake disorder. This condition makes people extremely picky eaters to the point where they only have a few select foods that they are willing to eat. For Shulg's, peanut butter is a safe food and he eats many peanut butter sandwiches every day, up to 4 sandwiches daily. He posted an unhinged video where you can see his peanut butter table filled with open jars and stale breads everywhere. Tier 4 GB Mallet A user named GB went to prison for smacking someone in the head with a mallet. He was working as a stonemason and the entire server was in absolute disbelief when they found out. Except this never actually happened and what started as a joke only escalated when GB refrained from speaking for over a week to let the rumor spread. eBay's Device a user named Ebade created a device that according to him can cure PTSD and anxiety. After speaking with him directly, he reveals that he suffered a brain injury while serving in the Marine Corps that left him with pseudobobar, a condition that causes sufferers to experience uncontrollable episodes of crying, laughing, and other out-of-context emotions. In efforts to cure his pseudobobar, he created a device it took him many years and drew inspiration from Carl Jung's red book, specifically the active imagination method. In the pulsing magnets, Tesla by Phylicor was created a vortex, a pulse vortex, and it creates like this grid in my vision. And when you pair this with an NMDA antagonist, it seals in the microtubule alignments. It, 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 it permanently makes them aligned fixes PTSD, fixes anxiety, fixes, fixes a lot of different neurological conditions. He said it's helped his condition and continues to research and use it. I do want to point out that none of these claims are verified and I'm simply reporting what he believes.
Dexter Celestial Live PD. A now banned user named Dexter Celestial was featured in a viral video on Live PD. He had a public meltdown as a result from taking a large amount of LSD. It all began when his father called the police explaining that his son was running around with a knife. Dex would end up running down the street towards a group of people who frantically flagged the police down as they were arriving from the initial call. Upon putting him in handcuffs, he had a strange outburst mentioning random things but mostly talking about wanting to be cool. I love you! I wanted to be cool. I would- Guys, that's not cool! Please, I just wanted to be cool, guys! I want to f*** a girl. And I'm going to do anything USA. that's cool. Yeah, I'm Isn't that cool? Texas Celestial, man. This video has 4.4 million views currently. Rye Grooming Rye was a user who was banned for e-dating underage girls. He was 24 years old when he was e-dating a user that went by the name Toes. When it was discovered that Toes was only 16 years old, he quickly tried to cover his tracks and say that he was unaware. Another user calls him out on this behavior. Bruh, if you really want to know, she told me that she's actually 16 and that you knew the whole time. To which Rai responds, saying, Not the whole time, only the last two months. He said that on the 1st of March, which makes what he posted one day before February even more disturbing. He was known to brag in chats about the sexual things he did and wanted to do to Toes. Around the same time, he was e-dating another minor who was 17. All of them were immediately banned from the server. Tier 5 Elijah DMT Motel a user named Elijah the Prophet was extracting DMT alongside other substances in a motel room when he had a psychotic episode. After taking large amounts of substances, Elijah believed that he was possessed by the devil. In a state of extreme paranoia, he ended up calling the police on himself. The instructions in his motel room were discovered when the authorities arrived, which would lead to Elijah serving jail time. Meow dude, I can't really cover this one in detail, but this user got banned for liking animals in a disturbing way. He mentioned creepy desires for horses. Mula eating his own vomit. The previously mentioned Make Mula ate his own vomit after throwing up due to DXM pills. He says the reason he did it is to not waste any of the DXM as it was 3am and that's all he had left at that time. Interestingly, he's not the only one in the server to have ate their own vomit for exactly this reason. Rick is a predator. I've provided important screenshots as I tell you this story. Rick was a former owner of the Dexterverse but was banned because of allegations of predatory behavior, grooming, and taking advantage of a minor while she was under the influence. Rick was 28 years old when he began talking to an underage girl who was 17. The Dexterverse is meant to be for those who are 18 and older, but he made an exception with her and immediately was trying to hang out with her and had even obtained her address in conversation as they were both from Pittsburgh. This girl, who will remain anonymous, was bordering on blackout drunk one night. Something that was obvious to those who were in the voice chat, as she was spending her night getting drunk and voice chatting on Discord. She was telling everyone how extremely drunk she was. Rick took notice of this and sent her a message telling her that he was on his way to her house. Initially, she didn't believe this, but 15 minutes later, Rick actually showed up. She mentions that she hardly remembers the details of that night and expressed that she wasn't in the state of mind to actually consent to what happened. But that night would lead to sex. She said this was her first time and had not even had sex with her then boyfriend. This led to a mental breakdown as she went to therapy for it. She revealed these events to a therapist who reported it, but by this time she was 18 years old and had to decide for herself if she wanted to pursue criminal charges. At this point, Rick would end up moving to California, meaning she would never have to see him again. She reasoned that he's gone and also didn't want to report what happened in fear that her father would find out. 
But ultimately, she says that she really doesn't know why she can't bring herself to take legal action against him. Another woman that went by the name Shkurzo reported identical behavior from Rick soon after. This woman was 18 years old and claims that Rick allegedly d***ed her with research chemicals before having sex with her. Again, nothing ever came of this, but those who knew Scurzo claim that she hasn't been the same ever since. Two more women would come forward to report at and one of them has never been heard from ever since she made those allegations. It's unclear whatever happened to her. You might be wondering what Rick had to say about these allegations. Well, he points out that the age of consent in Pittsburgh is 16. He claims that these girls were throwing themselves at him and he states his innocence. Again, no legal action has ever come of this. And now Rick runs one of the most popular DXM subreddits where he allegedly bans anyone who alludes to these allegations. He also runs another very popular DXM Discord. Another thing to note is that this was a previous version of the Dexterverse under his leadership and they have since banned him and moved servers where behavior like this is not tolerated at all. The sixth and final tier, Static's death. Mid-September 2023, a user known as Static and her previously mentioned boyfriend, Ebaid, allegedly ingested DXM before they both fell asleep. This would be the last time Static would be alive and the beginning of a bizarre criminal investigation. Upon waking up, Ebay noticed Static's lifeless body and tried to give her CPR. He stepped out of the room and Static's mother noticed that Ebay was acting unusual. The mother quickly went to check on Static and Ebay blocked the door, preventing her from getting in. This behavior only prompted her mother to become suspicious of Ebay. Ebay later stated that he blocked the door to protect the mother from the emotional trauma of seeing her lifeless daughter. After the mother managed to get into the room and found Static's body, EMS were called. It's unknown how long Ebay was awake performing CPR. When the investigators arrived, Ebay claimed that the rubble tablets they ingested might have been laced. Ebaid was taken to jail for a few days and his court date followed soon after. At this time, Static's mother was sure Ebaid murdered her daughter, posting comments on Ebaid's YouTube channel calling him a murderer and exposing his real name for all to see. When the court date arrived, charges were dropped against Ebaid as they found no reason to believe that he had committed first or second degree murder. Though a cocktail of substances alongside DXM were discovered in Static's body, further complicating the case. The court of public opinion isn't exactly done with Ebaid, as the allegations continue to pile against him for the suspicious actions he took after her death. Static had her own discord called Dextronauts, with a couple hundred members. Using Static's personal information, Ebay logged into her Discord and quickly deleted the server without any notice to any of the moderators. Some believe that this is Ebay trying to cover his tracks. Ebay is known for believing and speaking about angels, demons, solar flares, the end of the world, and other bizarre things. He spoke about receiving visions from taking DXM and other substances alongside using his machine that we discussed earlier. Ebay would state, With the visions my partner and I are getting using my device, things are escalating faster than we know. It seems like Static was projecting all the same beliefs that her boyfriend was known for speaking about. And even more concerning messages were screenshotted a few months before her death, where she would tell her friend that she had to push herself to do more drugs to see what her boyfriend sees. Static would state, I tried to go as deep as I could, but I gotta do more. I gotta see what my boyfriend sees before it hurts him. Her friend responds, Don't OD to try to match someone else. Everyone has their own personal limits. Also, what people see while high vary from person to person based on several factors. Just be careful, homie. To which Static responds by saying, I gotta push myself. I gotta understand what he won't tell me. 
He's able to talk to some higher entity. He doesn't believe me when I say I understand, so I must show him. This message only fuels the allegation that Ebade's beliefs were pushing Static to do more substances. Static began to warn people on her Dextronaut Discord that the world was going to end due to solar flares. She knew the precise date of the end of the world, and that date would be the day that she died. Static's cousin would say, And he told my cousin that everyone was going to die Sunday anyway, so my cousin already was believing that she was going to die that day because of solar flares, and he put that thought into her mind. Static's cousin also expressed concerns for other behavior stated in this screenshot. I've talked to Ebade personally, and his version of what happened is way different. Ebade expresses how heartbroken he is from the whole ordeal, and is just trying to move on. He said he wants everyone to understand how dark DXM can be, and aims to help those who need it. I asked eBay if he wanted to make a statement for this video. This is the video he made for me to show you. One more thing, all these allegations are allegations. eBay did get investigated and all the charges were dropped and I let him know ahead of time that I'd be reporting on the allegations people had against him. Let's take a quick second to understand that dextromethorphan, while it is a by many people in many ways is still some people's easiest and most accessible escape from reality. Being legal in the United States and able to purchase over the counter, this drug is used by many people who can't afford health care, feel isolated from society, or are dealing with mental health problems. There's a lot of current research and clinical trials out there right now that are utilizing dextromethorphan to treat medical resistance to depression. While dextromethorphan addiction is life altering, the dissociation effects have a very strong draw with people suffering from existing mental conditions such as dissociative identity disorder, autism, PTSD, and many other neurodivergent conditions. Anibis Christmas Box January 18th, 2019 A user who went by the name Anibis, real name Daniel Lopez, called 911. Daniel Lopez called the authorities stating that his roommate Ana Dolores allegedly sh** off. The authorities would arrive to an eerie scene as Ana's body was in a box meant for a plastic Christmas tree. Daniel explained that he found her lifeless body on the living room couch and a rifle on her lap and decided to clean all the blood so that his grandmother with dementia wouldn't come home and witness the tragic scene. The Christmas tree box was filled with her clothing, cleaning materials, bloody couch cushions, and a partially eaten apple. Daniel had also discarded the spent cartridge and had moved the gun back to his room. Daniel was held on suspicious circumstances but wasn't arrested. In February, detectives found that Daniel had manually deleted his call history, text messages, photographs, and data off his cell phone the day that Anna died. Additional information from a neighbor claimed that he had witnessed Anna on the floor and Daniel standing over her, and Anna had also expressed fear of Daniel to her friends and family. Daniel was finally arrested five months later and currently in prison. The DV House This case occurred before Dextroverse would move to Discord over 10 years ago. Four members of the Dextroverse would meet in IRC when they decided to relocate from Nevada and Colorado to Washington where the four would share an apartment together. It was two men and two women, and of course they all were heavily addicted to DXM. One of the women began fearing everyone's irrational behavior and decided to leave the apartment. Two weeks later, the three members would ingest DXM and watch the movie The Matrix. During the movie, one of the men began slamming his head onto the floor and then the walls, punching the walls, screaming, they're in the walls, I've got to get them out, alluding to a scene in the movie. He then moved to the kitchen where he grabbed a knife. The woman followed him and he embraced her with a hug before driving the blade through her neck and then into his own chest. 
He died from the injuries, the woman recovered, and the other member was not involved in any of the violent events. This incident made it into the Journal of Forensic Science. And that was a descent into one of the internet's darkest communities. Thank you guys so much for watching. My email is down below if you guys want to get in contact. Please consider subscribing and becoming a Patreon. And as always, I will see you in the next one.